Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about networks and trees. And a couple of things, so a network is a graph that's connected, and let's remember a tree is a graph that is connected and has no circuits. Okay, so first, the degree of separation between two vertices is the length of the shortest path between those two vertices. And let's go ahead and use this definition on this first example here. So we've got a graph and we first wanna know, is this network a tree? It's connected, so it's a network, but we're asking, is it a tree? And we can see immediately there are several circuits. So there's this square on the end here, there's a triangle and a hexagon. So the answer is no because there are circuits. All right, now what we wanna do is find the degree of separation between several pairs of vertices. So first we want the degree of separation between C and E. Okay, so here's our vertex C, here's our vertex E, and degree of separation is the length of the shortest path. And there are several paths we can find between C and E. We can go down and around here. We can go over the top. But the shortest one is just this edge connecting the two. And the length of a path with one edge is just one. So they have degree separation one. Okay, now we want to talk about degree of separation between A and E. All right and we want the shortest path, we're just gonna sort of play around with the ways we can get from one to the other and see what the shortest is. Well, here we can go one over to B, two down to K, three, four, okay? We can go one to B, two to C, three to J, four up to E. But here, if we take B, then C, and then go straight over to E, we cut down from four to just three. And we'll see the only other way we could go would be A, B, C, D, E, which is length four. So this one that we've drawn in green, A to B to C to E, length three is the shortest. All right, now we wanna find degree of separation between A and H. So between A and H. And let's go ahead and look here. So we know we can cut some of the work off because we know that the shortest way to get to E is to go up to B, up to C, over to E. So there's no shorter way to get through this left-hand part of the graph. And then there's only one option to go over to F. And now we've got two options to go over to H, but they both have the same number of edges. So if we go up here, that's adding two to our path. If we go down here, that's also adding two to our path, but they have the same length. So we count one, two, three, four, five, six is gonna be our degree of separation. Okay, let's think about the next example. We're going to be talking about some properties of trees first. So let's remind ourselves that a tree is connected and has no circuits. Okay, so first property is the single path property, which we'll abbreviate SPP. And what we mean by the single path property is that there is exactly one path between each pair of vertices. So here we've got a tree on the left. If we take just any random pair of vertices, there's only one 
way to get between them. And so we can see if there was more than one way, right? If we had a path that went, say, up this way, and then we had a path that went maybe a little weird, but went back up this way, well, together those would form a circuit and we don't have circuits in trees. So there's always only one path between any pair of vertices. All right, the all bridges property. Every edge in a tree is a bridge. And we can see this in any of our examples. Let's look at this one down on the left side here. So remember, a bridge is one where if we deleted that edge, it would disconnect the graph. And we see if we delete any of the spokes on this graph, we've got two different pieces that are totally separated, this little three spoke part and this vertex. And that's gonna happen no matter what edge we do. Or in this green one, right, we could erase this one and we split it into two. We could erase this one and we split it into two and it's gonna be the same no matter what edge we take out. So every edge in a tree is a bridge. All right, and our last property, the n minus one edges property. If our tree has n vertices, there are n minus one edges. And we can verify this here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five vertices and four edges. Here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine vertices. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight edges. So every vertex, right, is connected up to some other vertex, but if we were to add in that nth edge or that ninth edge, it would have to connect two vertices that are already connected up. So we can't have that. There's always n vertices and n minus one edges. Okay, now we're going to use these properties, uh, the all bridges property, the single path property, and the n minus one edge property to solve the following example. So we want to determine if the graph described is a tree without a doubt, uh, definitely not a tree, or might be a tree, might not. We don't know. We need more information. So let's go ahead and look at the first one. A network with 15 vertices and 16 edges. All right. Well, let's remember, we've got the single path property We've got the all bridges property, and we have the n minus one edges property. Well, we've got information about number of vertices and edges, so let's see if we can work with n minus one edges. So any tree with 15 vertices would have to have n minus one or 14 edges by the n minus one edge property. Which means that the graph we've got here can't be a tree because it has too many edges. So here our answer is B, definitely not a tree because there are too many edges. All right, next one is similar a network with 16 vertices and 15 edges. Okay, so this satisfies the n minus one edge property. Okay, but we just wanna check and see, is there any way we could have it not be a tree? So we've gotta have 16 vertices. Okay, so I'm just drawing a random graph with 16 vertices and it has only 15 edges. And the kicker here is that a network has to be connected. Okay, 
So we're gonna fill in edges and keep in mind all of these vertices, right, have to get connected up to some other vertex in the graph. So here I've used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I wanna see if there's a way that I can connect up all of these and still be able to not have a tree to make a circuit. Well, I've connected all of them up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So it takes 15 edges just to make sure it's a network. And there's no edges left over to make a circuit, so it's got to be a tree. So this one is A, definitely a tree. OK. Let's do another similar one, a network with 10 vertices, which we call A through J, but with only a single path connecting A and J. So we've got A and let's say B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. Okay. Okay. And we know there's only one way to get from A to J. So maybe that one way looks like this, okay? But we have no other information, right? So all that tells us is that for this one pair of vertices, there's a single path, but there might not be a single path for every pair. For instance, let's fill in the rest of this graph. Okay, so I could add a parallel edge here and a parallel edge here and a parallel edge here. And this is no longer a tree because here's a bunch of circuits, but it still has the property that there's 10 vertices in a single path connecting A and J. So it doesn't have to work for just one pair. You have to have one path no matter what pair you choose. And for instance here, there's more than one way to get from B to C. Okay, so we could have a graph like this is describing that's a tree, but we could also have one not a tree. So this is C, uh, maybe a tree. We need more information. All right, and the last one <clears throat> a network with five vertices that all have degree two. Okay, so let's think about our toolbox of graph stuff. And what do we have to work with when we know information about the degrees of the vertices? Well, we have Euler's theorems. Okay, so if they all have degree two, every vertex is even. And what does a graph have when every vertex is even? It's got an Euler circuit. Okay. And the key word here is circuit, right? We don't necessarily care in this example that it's an Euler circuit. We care that the graph has a circuit, which means it's not a tree. So we get B definitely not a tree. And that is it for today.